So welcome everybody to the Rec Innovation Lab. We are so excited to see everybody here. I, um, I'm looking forward to getting uh, this workshop started. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from Fran. Uh, she's been just an amazing mentor with the Rec since she started. And um, this is going to be her first workshop. And it's nice to see some familiar faces there in the audience. We have people from the REC, people from SDSU. Obviously, the workshops are open uh, to anybody who's interested in entrepreneurship. And we hope that you get a lot of value out of these. And uh, it's so good to see you, Fran. Good to see you. <laughs> it's been Welcome. a while. Yeah, yeah. So um, I see, uh, Stephen, uh, do you have any housekeeping items or any announcements that you'd like to make before we get started? Yes, just please keep a look out in the chat for our survey. We take, uh, we give the survey out to get feedback for our guests, for the regs, so we can continue making these wonderful workshops for everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. And uh, Angela, Enzo, or the rest of the team, are there any things that you needed to add or would like to add? No, just really looking forward to Fran's workshop. Hi, Fran. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I, I was thinking about doing an introduction uh, uh, and give you a little bit about Fran's background because it's really impressive. She has been working in the tech space for a long time, and I feel just so fortunate that she's a mentor here um, at the REC for the Miramar students. Um, but I'm, I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about herself. Uh, suffice it to say, though, I'm grateful that she's here and grateful that she's sharing with all of us. So Fran, would you like to tell us a little bit about uh, your background before we get started? Sure. My name is Fran Barbaro. I am the CEO and president of Barbaro Technologies, um, the former TerraZones International and Gion's LLC. I've been in the computer software space, hardware and everything else space since 1982. I have had a wealth <laughs> of every type of position you could have in the industry. It's probably I, before a lot of these students were even born, <laughs> right? <laughs> True. Scary to say, scary to say, but yeah. <laughs> probably say, what are you doing? You should be retired. I wish I was. <laughs> but um, I had a very interesting career path. I started off with a few startups that were very hot startups in the beginning in the early 80s. Went to work at Honeywell Incorporated as a uh, engineer, systems engineer. I learned everything I could possibly could about operating systems, hardware components, embedded controllers, networking, artificial intelligence, and ARPANET. Left mm -hmm. there to go and help build Adobe systems. Mm -hmm. I was one of the employees at Adobe. I spent 11 years of my life there. <laughs> So and you were one of the founding employees at Adobe. So when Adobe was, was coming to be, you were one of the people who was helping create that company, that startup. That's startup. correct. I was, we were calling I was, Adobe a startup, right? <laughs> it but, was. It really yeah. was. Uh, it was only 111 people. It was, you know, it had 60 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what the hell we were doing. <laughs> so <laughs> all, us, all we right? knew is we had fun. Steve Jobs invested 20 million and we had to make this work. No, seriously, uh, Adobe had a lot of vision, but didn't have a lot of business sense in some in a ways. Mm -hmm. And Steve helped us on that side and on the marketing side. Um, <laughs> I was helping from the ground up, working with the, uh, the topographers and the designers in New York City. I just mm -hmm. picked up, I was only 26 years old, and I went off. And I said, this is what we have to do. And I just <laughs> did yeah. what I had to do to build a company. <laughs> so, right. Like the rest of us, every every company that there was was a startup right. at one time. I just love that. I love that. So, yeah. <laughs> so and uh, when I left, it was a billion dollar company. Um, we had were very very successful, very very successful. I was in large there. Part, thank you. I'm mm -hmm. sure. I said in large part thanks to you. I'm sure. Yeah. Well. Yeah. They told me that a few years ago. Actually, I didn't realize how much money I supposedly brought in every quarter. Um, I didn't know that. It was a surprise to me that I actually brought in $250 million a quarter to the company. Wow. wow. And um, that was put based on all everything I was doing for the company, from uh, licensing the technology, helping our OEMs build new products, and, and trying to teach them how to get away from you know competitors so they could mm -hmm. own the market, yeah. help them price it, which you're not supposed to do, by the way. It's, that's a no-no, especially when you're a Swiss company. You're literally Swiss. Mm -hmm. Um and breaking into different markets altogether, trying to create new things for Adobe. 
And the only reason why I left is because I got very, very sick when I was pregnant with my son and I couldn't survive. So I had to stop working after. Yeah. And now you're working on, and now you're working on startups (laughs) of your own. So, um, so I, I love all of the, all of the advice that you've, you've given and that you, you've shared experience has just been so helpful for for me. And I know for a lot of the startups that you've talked to, um, what are you going to be sharing with them today? What will you be covering and talking about? Well, talk a little bit about marketing research, but reality is, is you're doing research every single day of your life. And it's, I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people don't, you've got to invest in a product and in yourself. It's yourself and the product that you want to bring forward, meaning you know that market, you know if you're capable to bring it forward, you have to know your competitors, you have to know everything. The truth. When I started my companies, I was really interested in the gaming industry. I was playing games when I was at Honeywell. I was goofing mm-hmm. around, you know, we were, we started off about 15, 20 minutes a day, and then it ended up being three hours a day, in the middle of the day, working, playing games, and then working till 2 okay. o'clock at night. So, I mean, you're thinking that, you know, this is crazy, right? And when I went to work for Adobe, I, I was thinking about the, the gaming industry and how we, Adobe, with line art and um, the graphics technology we were just starting to create, mm-hmm. um, we had our, our founder, John Warnock actually wrote the uh, the program for Adobe Illustrator. Mm-hmm. We had the, the fonts that were created by one of our uh, engineers who created the fonts and licensed it to Ag for an Apple and everybody else. Then he hold, he held the patent, so Adobe had a co patent with him, mm-hmm. and the Adobe Illustrator. Everything else we bought, wow. we bought every other application. There Acrobat was a precursor. It was the Acrobat. Um, uh, the p- application I was using before Acrobat was CPSI. I was the one who was helping drive that business. Mm. I only had I had a million dollar budget. That was it. Not even. It was just enough for wow. me and I to be run around the country and figure right. out who to license to. I had to write mm-hmm. the business plan. I had to do it all. And I had no it. idea. I had no idea that that was all that was all pre- procured. You bought all of that. Yes. It, it, it created, you brought everything. But- Wow, that's crazy. Everything. And if you think about it, that might be a way of leveraging your products. And I'm starting to think about that now. And the reason why I'm saying that, I'm bringing it myself to this point, is because I have 12 patents in the U.S. Patent Office, 13 or 14 and 15 pending. I don't know. We're looking at another CIP. It's in the field of augmented and virtual reality. I have included sensors and trans- in, in, um, geolocation, satellite transmission, and every component. We have been fighting uh, Nintendo, who owns so owned by Google, and um, I'm sorry, not Nintendo, Pokemon Go, that's still owned by Google, Nintendo, mm-hmm. and now parts of Samsung. Okay. So it was a very difficult time for us to go up against them. Mm-hmm. We thought they would license. They don't want to license. And the judges agreed with them, mm-hmm. making my patents, two of them, yeah. part of them, yeah. invalid. Right. Patents are uh, tough. So the idea then is to before as soon as they made those invalid, I asked my attorneys, now what do we do? They said, You're done. I said, No, I'm not. I'm never done. What do we do to fix the invalidity? Because the engine's correct. That's an operating system. I know they want to know how the operating system works. Right. And that's right. all they care about. And I'm not going to give that to them because it's a trade secret. Right. And remember, guys, you do have rights to trade secrets. Right. I was going to say, you don't always need a patent. I mean, a patent is it's different. Sometimes, sometimes a trade secret can be even more valuable than a patent. It's and you much more valuable that. if you can build it. Yep. And the problem is we never cut, could raise the funds to build this. But it's mm. an operating system. It's the next generation operating system. It finally came out in court, but that's what I was building. Ah, well, well I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing seeing what, what, what comes of this. So um, I just want to remind the audience here, all of you, if you have questions, please, 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 uh, you know, put them in the chat. We're going to save some time at the end for questions. And um, yeah, stick to it, Fran, right? Stick yeah. to it. We, we can't wait no. to see what comes of this. So um, now, are you controlling the slides or do we have Stephen controlling? No, them? you guys. Stephen, let's go to the next slide. Let's just start with a marketing research That's platform. Fun. I mean, realistically, I'm just going to walk through marketing research, as you probably well know. You know, marketing research, a definition, what is it? It's research, which is recognition of information. In fact, the slides came a little off. I don't know why. Effective no, okay. decision-making, <laughs> systematic and objective, uh, looking at things systematically and objectively. You're trying to exude or disseminate information. 
you have an A for analysis of your information because you're constantly analyzing. You're constantly mm -hmm. looking at your market. You're constantly learning. Um, and what are you doing? You're trying to recommend a recommendation for action. When I was at Adobe, I'd be out there. I'd be meeting with folks, trying to really determine what they were, what they were trying to do, what their real needs were. We almost lost the market to Microsoft because of the fonts. If it wasn't that I had gone in and convinced the topographers and the major designers in New York, we would have lost the market. I got them involved with Adobe. I got them involved with our, our owners who they thought was, why are you doing this? It's not worth it. I got Seabold involved and we started a whole group that became a premier desktop publishing industry platform. The Seabold publishing, the Seabold, Seabold um, uh, applications, their research, everything. They made billions of dollars on this. And this is where we are. Let's go to the next slide. So it's taking and learning and always constantly trying to determine who your audience is, what are their needs? Their needs change on a daily basis, constantly. So marketing research is the what, when, why. Uh, why what marketing research is, is a journey. You are literally on a journey of how you're gonna build your product, market your product, how, what's that product life cycle? How far are you gonna go with this? When is the marketing research conducted? From the idea, throughout the phase, throughout the entire life cycle. It never ends. And this is what people don't understand. Your product cycle never ends. You have to regenerate. You constantly have to look at it. How do I repurpose this technology I've created? How can it fit somewhere else? If it's a widget, like the woman who created the brooms, um, what's her name, Mangiano, she has over 300 patents on brooms. And she has this type of broom and that kind of broom and mops and everything else. And she became a multi-billionaire, all from a, a broom and a mop. So it's constant. She's constantly looking at ways to constantly change her mop. And I, can't, I can't even picture what that patent looks like. I'm gonna have to look this up afterwards. You realize that. <laughs> 300 pounds on a broom, right? <laughs> <laughs> and why is it necessary? Because it's, it's necessary to determine if your idea is viable. You're always testing, 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 testing. You wanna test your market. You wanna test your personas. You wanna test everybody who you're trying to sell this product to. Market changes, people change. I mean, one minute, yeah, we're all on social media. The next minute, we may be off of social media. Something might happen to take us all away from it. And maybe it is a game that you're all involved in a game. And it's a different type of social media. So the game platform, which is what we were trying to build, was social media. It became a selling tool. You could go and shop. You can set up reservations. You could do everything. We had it all designed to be really, truly an immersive environment by geolocations. Mm -hmm. That's why we call the company Terra Zones. Terra for land, zones for location. So it's constant. <laughs> Let's right. go to the next. Constantly evolving. I, I, I love this. I, I love that, especially when you say it's social media today, who knows what it's gonna be tomorrow? Who knows? That's right, it's, it's right. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, a, we could be sitting talking to each other and having other people come in, in, in and out. And yeah. you could be selling something from your home that's, this is my virtual store instead of having to a social media platform. You could be doing things if you just think about it, but expand it. But the one thing I'm going to tell you that I learned, create something very small, something that's small enough that people can understand, Thank you. that is small enough that's, that doesn't cost too much. Riches and niches. Yes, I say this all the time. I love this. Yep. I love the venture capitalists will not give you the money. They don't understand anything. They want 90% of your company and they give you nothing in return. I've seen it over and over and over again. Right. You're sitting there going, well, I'm at the end. I'll take the million dollars. Okay, thank you very much. I never said that. I never did. And I said, I just kept going. And I've seen more successes because people just keep going. So how do we conduct marketing research? You define the problem that you're trying to solve and you research its objectives. You develop your research plan. That could even be on a napkin, to be honest with you. It could be anywhere. But keep revising it. Keep looking at it and revising it. Collect data. And as I say, you're constantly collecting data. 
you never stop. You can get it from your child. You can get it from your neighbor. You can get it from your pets. If you're looking at something that will give you an idea, anything will give you, will turn on that light bulb. Uh, analyze the information, make sure you have everything, but remember you never have everything. And that's the key. It's a constant learning, constant changing, constant morphing. Right. What do you do after we conduct our research, we present our findings and we make our product, we make our decisions and we decide, is this what we really want to do? Now, what's our competition? What are they doing? How are we going to get there? What happens if they come in and squash us? They're so much bigger than us. How do we protect ourselves to protect our idea, which is really tough? You would think it's patents. No. Tell me it's not anymore. It's the no. laws changed. The judges listen to the Yaga copies. You know, they just don't care. Yeah. They no, don't so, care. So, they listen no. to the big companies. If you listen to some of the cases that were before us and the appeals court and the federal appeals, we made it all that way. You would die. It was Novartis. It was Juno Pharmaceuticals. And they were getting kicked. And they only had 10 minutes, 10 wow. minutes to make okay. their peace. Wow. My lawyer didn't even have five. So the judges make up their minds because they see Google, uh, uh, you know, Niantic, and then they say, who's this person? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next one. <laughs> Next slide. Where is marketing research conducted? And this is something that I always say. It's everywhere. It's conducted in all places. Anywhere you go, the mall, the car dealership, restaurant, you're constantly asking questions. You're constantly polling. You're constantly trying to find a way to extract from other people what their thoughts are. You kind of give a little bit of your idea, but not really. You're presenting in a way that you say, what do you think about something like this? Hey, you know, I saw this. What do you think? I read something that had, you know, this, that, the other thing. You're constantly, constantly, constantly doing research. And it's everywhere, every day, continuously. And it never ends. It doesn't end. When I was at Adobe, they thought that they ended with PostScript. And I said, uh-uh. We need to do something more with PostScript. We've licenses to everybody. Now what do we do? Let's, and I started thinking. I said, let's make a visionary PostScript. And they said, what? I said, something that comes onto our screen. So we can actually visualize everything on the screen. Instead of just having it on a printed page, let's print on the screen. Sure enough, we had display PostScript technology. Steve Jobs loved the idea. He ran with it. He built the next computer because he was on his way out of Apple. It was all, you know, it was us working on it and saying, I really want to build this. And Warnock said to him, Frank came up with this idea. What do you think? And he's, that's great. Let's do it. <laughs> so... It's always nice to have somebody with big pockets like that, very deep pockets. You right, know, you that, right? dreams come true, right? That's correct. <laughs> Next slide. I, I love this. I, 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 Fran, sometimes I'll hear from people coming into the, the incubator. Well, yeah. uh, oh, Tanya, I'm already done with my research. I don't need to do any more research. I'm, I'm, I've done my customer <laughs> discovery. What? No, you're never done. I'm sorry. You're not done. I promise you. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I started this whole idea, it started in 1983. My research was never done. I had an idea back then. I could have filed a patent back then. And I could have had a great patent. But who was I going to license it to? What was I going to do with it? I couldn't figure out how to build a product. I was thinking, okay, I can merge these things together. And I can pull this, that. And they said, yeah, but I don't understand that. It was so many years too early. Too when early. I finally find, filed my patent, after learning engineering, operating systems, networking, yeah. artificial intelligence. I mean, I learned everything and I was finally ready. I said, this is what we need to do. And yeah. when I realized Adobe was the last piece that I needed, it was that 2D technology through satellite transmission that we were sending stuff for the fonts. And mm -hmm. that's when it dawned on me, we need a 3D engine. We need this. And then I thought games. And it was a 2001 that it all finally came together. And I was able to write my patent because then I had my entire process that I needed to do. So your research I, I, time, I, <laughs> go ahead. I, no, I just can't wait till this becomes a reality. I, I, I know, oh, I know you, I know that you're going to make it happen, but 
anyways. Okay, yeah, back to research. Uh, we have quantitative research and qualitative research. I'm sure you know from learning, from being the classes, the differences between quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative meaning, you know, numbers, constantly crunching, trying to get data, data, data. And the places you can find data is amazing because of the internet. There's so many different places you can look from different companies, which I'll talk about a little bit later, to qualitative research. You're, again, you're asking questions. You're sending out um, um, surveys, and that becomes qualitative, but quantitative as well. You focus groups. When I was building my games, I built two games that a demo that we demoed in front of Microsoft and others. They love the idea, but then they ran with it themselves, um, which is kind of a shame, but whatever. We're not done yet. <laughs> we, no. uh, we had a focus group at the universities, so we tied ourselves to the universities. We had focus groups in my house. We invited all neighbors, friends, uh, friends of the engineers that I had, of the designers. I mean, it just spread out. I had 70 people in my home and different groups in each room. And each one was monitored by somebody. It was being, so they were asking the questions, they were getting everything. And we would ask them about the games. What, would, what do you think about something like this? And of course, how we paid them was we fed them. We bought bagels, cream cheese, whatever you have to do. And the same thing happened with universities. We'd buy pizza, we bought drinks for them. And everybody came because they wanted to be a part of these focus groups. It's another way of doing it. Um, we did a lot of record keeping. We did one-on-one -on -one interviews. I did a lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews with companies, CMOs and CIOs. And I would actually just pick up the phone and contact them. I the flu and say, I'm doing a research paper. You know, I'm getting my, uh, I'm doing my dissertation. And this is what I wanted to know. What do you think of this idea? Would you, our company, be interested in this, that, and the other thing? And they're always saying the same thing. Yes, we would. And I said, thank you. Who's doing that? I said, well, no, yeah, yeah. We're just doing research right now. <laughs> and that's the danger of dealing with that. But at least you're getting back some one-on-one -on -one feedback from people in industries as well as outside of your industry. Let's go to the next slide. Qualitative, qualitative marketing research is used for focused research, as we've been talking about, uh, for projects, for small products, for even when I'm doing, we're looking at printers. I was trying to figure out if we could build a postscript interpreter for a dot, uh, for an inkjet printer. And what I did was I came out with a software design that we built it for the for the actual PC. And it would send out PostScript, which is now PDF, by the way. So you can print out to those printers. Before that, you couldn't do that. And I had the vendor sell it for $99. I connected them with Canon Corporation and with Epson. Uh, we got our royalties. Everybody got their royalties. And everybody made money. It was great. Quantitative marketing, random sampling. You're sampling, you're testing, you're looking at small populations, you're looking at surveys. Um, I would also add um, persona marketing research onto that because that way you're looking at in different individuals of who do you think is going to be part of your market and each persona is a different person, what type of person, the age group, you know, would they like this, wouldn't they like this, will they use this, and you're breaking them down in a research document. I was working with Bentley College on that that um, I had a team of students helping me out with the personas, breaking it out for the retail industry and the retail market. So I got away from the games. I started doing something else. And that's how we were getting to see if people would be able to fit into this, the types of people, their age groups. I mean, it's everything is really constant testing, 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 testing. Research, research, research. But trust me, you got to build a product too. Next. <laughs> Next slide. The types of marketing research are ad tracking, advertising, brand equity, brand testing, brand attributes. I mean, I've worked with the AMA, the American Marketing Association. I worked with um, several advertising companies. I would call banks into it because we were trying to get e-commerce as well. How do we work with the banks? 
How can we, you know, test a concept? Who, do we need these people as part of our team? So you're looking at ways of here's my market. Here's the people, the type of people I need. I need industry experts. I need to keep going by building more focus groups and testing. Competitor information, who's in this market? When I started in the gaming market, it was only $700 million company. I'm sorry, industry. $700 million. It wasn't even a billion-dollar industry. And now it's a multi-billion, almost a trillion-dollar industry. Let's go to the next slide. Copy testing. This is continuation of all the things you could be doing. Customer satisfaction. What's the demand? The distribution channel. Who, how are you going to sell it? How are you going to market it? Uh, what's your price points? How are you going to position it? Do you have a sales force cast? When I did the business plans at one right after another, you would have your sales forecast. You would have your marketing plans. You had to have your executive summary. You would have to have your uh, management team. You had to know everything. No venture capitalist would talk to us unless we had everything in place. And so our business plan had to become 35 pages long. <laughs> we had forecasts, financial forecasts that were amazing. <laughs> That went out to about 10 years, how much money we needed per phase, per product, per everything we were trying to do. And then we shrunk those plans down to this is how much, if I have only a million dollars, this is what I could do. If I have $3 million, this is what I can do. And by, by phase, we did everything. Social networks, viral marketing, everything, anything you can think of, be on panels, constantly push your product, push yourself push your company, but be careful with your product. You don't want to disclose too much because somebody else could come up with an idea who is bigger than you and take it from you. Let's go to the next slide. Marketing research sources. Google's great. And then there's Dogpile and other search engines that you can use. Years ago, it used to be AOL, AOL but you know, they're, they're gone. Um, from a local directories, there's so, certain places you can go look at your directories for local areas that you can actually be a part of uh, a group or a network. Again, the university is always the best place to start and then break into the industry slowly. Try to team up with industry experts. Um, find out how you can network with them. It's sites and blogs. It's always places that you can find information. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, content sites, uh, reviews and, and recordings, anything you can think of. There's a lot here. There's so many things that you can do, that you can find. And I don't know why this slide got cut off. Uh, so, and I had a chart here that shows a list. That can funky. Yeah, I, I hate when that happens. Ah, that's weird. Well, anyway, um, it was newspapers, print, electronic, journals, magazines, uh, different sites, government sites. Um, I wish we could slide. You could pop, give everybody these yeah, slides. Know. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you know what I'll do? Why don't I do this? Afterwards, I'll send the, uh, yes, uh, the guest. Send I'll send you the, yeah. So that I'll send you all the email. The, the sure. Yep, so you guys can have it. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah. No problem. Let's go to the next slide. The marketing research sources. Now, this is what I did. I went to Gartner, Juniper Networks, Forrester, IDG. I went to the big players first. Then I started looking at online for other companies, other statistics like Report Linker. They would be, they would connect me to all these other reports in the industry, depending on what I was looking for. It is like eighty-nine dollars a month to be able to get. Sometimes you get free data, sometimes you don't. I also used to look at Dun and Bradstreet constantly and Bloomberg. And as well as others. So you're constantly looking up terms, whatever, on your on your search engines to figure out where you want to go. Another place that I also did a lot of research, believe it or not, was at the USPTO. I would log into the patent office, put in keywords, and I mean think of anything you can think of that pertain to your business. It could be anything. You could say helicopter, you could see all the patents that come up on helicopter. 
because there's something in there that can relate to the artificial intelligence components. It could be something else that relates to the, um, to the satellite transmission. So you're looking at all these designs and looking and thinking and searching, and that helps you develop how to do your product. And it also gives you a key point of who else is out there. Then there is vendors who actually are patent, um, patent research firms that I spent <laughs> over $150,000 paying them money to research the areas that we're looking at and the patents I had filed to make sure that we really had a market and we really had something solid. NIRAC was one of them. I didn't put it on here. I don't even know if they exist anymore, but they used to have, they used to work for law firms and they did all the research for the law firms. Now, if you want that type of information, I'd be happy to send you to this NIRAC and there's several others that I use. Uh, then you go to the SBIR grant site to find out what they're doing, try to get an idea of what's out there, because you can always file for a grant, a small grant from the U.S. government. They actually had a roadshow this week um, for small businesses to get anywhere between $25,000 and $250,000, depending on what phase you are in your development. If you're just starting out, you give them a proposal. If you win, you get that money to come up with a document and present to the government, and then you file for the next phase to get more money. The SBA, I've tried several times with them. The most I've ever gotten with them is $10,000 because we don't have a shipping product. It drives me crazy. You would think that they would help small startups. They don't. But they help existing firms. They help existing right. small businesses that have been Correct. that have traction and are selling things. Yeah, that's a bit major misconception, yeah. Yeah. Right. And also, though, when I went to them to help me on coaching me, they do coach and they do provide you that information. That's why I have them on the research sources. They don't mm -hmm. understand. They really don't. They couldn't understand it. So I realized I was way out of their realm. They had no clue what I was talking about. Yeah. You know, and then you go to the International Trade Administration. There's another area where you can do your research and you're finding out what's happening internationally. So you remember, you're constantly trying to figure out what is happening, who's our competition, who can we partner with? And that's another key. I have tried for years to partner, including with Adobe. <laughs> and all they came back was, well, we'll give you $5 million, we're taking everything. I said, no. <laughs> you know? Right, no. It's worth more than that, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, it's Beth, I love that you say this, Fran. So, and I, I, I often uh, will have a hard time with the, especially brand new founders when they're, uh, when they're researching their competition, sometimes they'll even do things like try to like throw their competitors under the bus or say something bad about their competitors. And, uh, you know, I, I'm always telling them these could be your uh, collaborators. They could be your partner someday, or right. they could be your exit strategy. They could be the ones that you sell to. So, you know, right. never, never, um, never ignore your competition and also never, uh, you know, disparage them or, or treat right. them badly. But don't be naive. If you're doing a presentation in front of them, they take your ideas. Oh, they will course. ask many questions. They'll Too sign many. an NDA and they don't, uh, they don't abide by it at all. They don't. Yeah, they yeah, take your ideas and they run and they run. Mm -hmm. That's why I filed my patent to protect me. But <laughs> we have over 400 companies citing us. Mm -hmm. 400. Mm -hmm. Wow. My patents are in textbooks. They're everywhere. We made Law 360. We actually made the news in Law 360. And we still couldn't beat the beast. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have, a, there's been a couple of questions in the chat and people have asked me, yes. often, how do you defend? What do you do defend? What's the best defense? And I, I'll, I'll ask that to you. I have my opinions. Yes. But, uh, what do you think are the best defense, Bryn? The best, the best uh, defense is, I mean, I started building the product. Mm -hmm. I protected myself with NDAs. Mm -hmm. I protect myself by trade secrets. Mm -hmm. I hired lawyers. I mean, I have more lawyers than I can count. They're all making money and I've got nothing left. <laughs> so, right, right. But, but, but you see, it's, it's all of these things and more, right? It's, it's that's everything correct. That is that you correct. can do. Everything, everything you, can do. you can do to protect yourself. Don't write papers on your product. They take the papers and they run with right. it. 
One yeah. thing I found out is that IBM was trying to overturn my patents because they filed a paper that they thought was before my patent was filed. Mm -hmm. I filed the three weeks before they wrote the paper. Beautiful. They Perfect. knew what I was doing. That was the scary part. They right. knew yeah. because we were doing so many presentations with our game technology. They're watching. We, they're watching. Yes, yeah. they're all watching. So, they are now. Watching. Now, let me say this though: that does now uh, you get people on the other side thinking, then, well, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm going to keep my product in my head and nowhere else. And if you keep it in your head, that's where it's going to stay. You know, it's never right. going to go exactly. anywhere. You no, have to talk about it. Right. Yeah. Well, you have to talk about it, but in a way that you do it in a, in a way you don't tell them everything. Exactly. It's, a, it's an interesting yeah. time because when. When I, my first patent was awarded, this was my platform. This is my infrastructure platform that's, that they tried to overturn. They did overturn it because of one word. One word. What was it? Right? And the judge made it indefinite. We were at the Markman hearing because you have all these hearings, by the way, that you have to go through to litigate, to get in front and try to license. It is impossible. They have made it so impossible. And we also won against all the um, the infringement IPRs. I don't know if you guys heard about IPRs, but we won three that they were presented to us. We won them all. And we still, the judge found the loophole. In my designs, I had digital logic library, but in my specifications, and we call it digital logic because we wanted to group this thing. Mm -hmm. And my lawyer said digital logic library. But where was the digital logic? They were like, I can't believe this. You know what this means. Mm. And we presented it. it. Yeah. This is what. Hmm? Just the semantics. It was just that, that just simple as that. Is that they, wow. Yep. They're changing everything. You get a patent. Man, I'm telling you, you have to be so careful. You got to make sure that the lawyer is watched by another lawyer who's doing the claims for you. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And then you find out after the fact that your patents have issues because the laws have changed. Because mm. the laws have changed and they change them on a daily basis. It, it, I mean, it almost feels like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, no, I was just going to say, it almost feels like the best thing that you can do is just get this thing to market, right? Just get That's it to what market. I'm trying to do now. And mm -hmm. I have another idea, which I'm trying to. <laughs> oh, it's I started seeing, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But what happened was, is we went to the Markman here, we won, we got through the SBIRs, we won. We went every single step until we got to the federal court in San Francisco. And they mm -hmm. are Google friendly. The judge was impressed. He he looked at me, so you're Fran Barbara. I mean, it's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Can we get on with this now? I want to win my, I want to just settle, you know, I'm done with this. <laughs> but of course they didn't care. They don't even want to give you one penny. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, yeah. after all this, we we tried building the product. We couldn't get the funding. We um, a yeah. scout came out to offer me nine million dollars, mm -hmm. and I didn't know who he was. He had been hounding me for six months, and that's mm -hmm. another thing you have to be careful. Of. You got to know who you're talking to. Always, and you always. never know who's going to steal from you. Mm -hmm. Never know, because one of my people. When my when I filed the patent, he we had it here at the table. He stuck it in his brief because he had an interview. He apparently mm -hmm. promised some company in California, and I don't know who it was, mm -hmm. that he would give him that. And that patent was roaming around the table. And I watched that patent, but I, you know, I continued talking. Nobody ever saw that I was really watching because and he had stuck it in his brief. There were 20, there was about eight or 10 of us around the table. Mm -hmm. So he got up to leave. Cause I said, I said, excuse me, but the patent seems to be missing. Didn't they see it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was sitting right here. I got to talk to the lawyers about this, you know? Nice. Oh, then no, 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 I gotta go, I gotta catch a point. I said, before you go, <laughs> before you go, I need everybody to open up their, their folders, everyone. And everybody was like, and he just looked at me. I said, you too. <laughs> Wow. And uh, wow. he says, oh, I get nothing. I said, no, take out your binder and open that. And he didn't, he, then he realized I knew that he took caught. it. He was caught. Yeah, he was caught. Yeah. See, this is why your reputation is everything in entrepreneurship. It's yeah. everything. You've got you got to watch every single everything. thing. 
Yeah. You yeah. never know who's going to stab you. My own cousin, who actually, when I talked about the idea of funeral power, he sh he wrote a paper on MIT, won the top award, got thirty, you know, started a company based on that. He sold his company for thirty million. I went to him. I said, "How did you raise money? Figure it out yourself. Even your own family members, you oh. don't know who's going to kill you." Okay, so <laughs> that's not cool. I don't like that. No. Well, I know you will figure it out as the thing. I know you will. Yeah. And the idea is, <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I, I can't wait for this next step when, when it, when it happens. <laughs> no, I, want, I want to see this. I want to see this. Yeah. But the so. next thing is, here's, here was in 2009, the patent came out or 2008, whatever it was. And I had strung this guy along for six months because I couldn't find him on the internet. I couldn't find him. I couldn't figure out who he was and who he worked for. He wouldn't tell me. Oh, I'm just a consultant. I'm just looking for this. And I finally found him connected to that? Microsoft. He mm -hmm. was a Microsoft employee, but he was hidden under a different name. Yeah. See, I mean, the espionage is not for governments anymore. It's for companies. I mean, exactly, it's, it's, exactly. Yeah. I had decided then to meet with him. <laughs> yeah, and right. he, he was there with an attorney. He had an attorney with him, and they looked at me and they said. We don't want to talk to you. We want to talk to your engineers. Why are you I here? The engineer. Yeah. Sexism. Hmm? You are the engineer. And I said, I am the engineer. And they right? just sat, both of them sat back and they said, Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you know, the companies we work for, they have thousands of engineers doing yeah. this. You're just one person. I said, That's right. No. Yeah. <laughs> so I kept trying to ask them work for it, he wouldn't tell me so they started grilling me how does this work what did you do how does this work what does this do how does that do and i said well you know i use a little salt and pepper i boil the parsley you know and because he wouldn't tell me why should i tell him <laughs> so, right exactly i love it and so that went it. on for about an hour and he got so mad at me that he finally told me to get out so he walked me to the elevator he was so angry because he didn't get his way he wanted, and the lawyer, yeah. Yeah, the lawyer was very upset too because she was there, you know, trying to take notes. Oh, I and mean, yes. uh, yeah, so I asked, I turned around, I said, before I go home, who do you front for? Google, Microsoft, or IBM? All of them. Mm -hmm. I almost fell off my chair. Mm -hmm. He says, we were going to give you $9 million. And I said, that's it? $9 million. <laughs> And I looked at him, I said, you know better than I do how much this is worth. And I walked away. So you have all these crazy things that can happen to you. Don't settle, but also be careful. When you're ready to make money, just take it. Because don't sell for just a million bucks. And if you have all your people working for you, it's hard because I had I had 20 people working for me. I couldn't walk away with $9 million with 20 people and give up my technology. Oh, right. I just, yeah. I didn't say How are they going to? Right. right. After I had already invested 1.1 million at that time <laughs> of my own money. So, <laughs> and then all the people, yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, when you, it, it goes quick, the money, it goes, especially when you it have, goes quick, it goes so quick. Yeah. So, and and so I invested totally, we've invested 2.4 million into the patents. Mm -hmm. We shut down the game company. Let's go to the What are you hoping to get for it? If you point. knew what we were, what we know, what we <laughs> actually really know, Mm -hmm. <laughs> how much they owe us mm -hmm. put it this way we had a damages expert look mm -hmm. at my patents in 2013 now there was only four patents at the time mm -hmm. and they were their claims to the patents so they mm -hmm. break it down by claim by value mm -hmm. when he did the valuation even though he kind of lied a little bit because he felt that you know it was too big mm -hmm. it was way off the charts he said it's <laughs> this is worth $58 million back then, hmm. back then. And I went back at him and I said, you made a mistake. Everything you have here, all your evidence points to one patent and one patent claim. Hmm. He says, I can't tell you the truth. I said, you know exactly how much this is worth. Hmm. So if you think about it back then, these patents were worth in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Now that the market's developed, Mm -hmm. Just one company alone could be paying us up and over $400 million per. And, 
end. See, and the timing, okay. so the timing is, is everything, right? So it, Right. And now, so this is the problem. The timing, yeah. Yeah. you have to get it. You got to have a sponsor to get in there to help you. You need that relationship. I mean, you really do. When we yeah. filed, yeah. we filed the lawsuit, it was for 30 million. When we ran what they owed us, I can't tell you because it was in the hundreds wow. and it was wow. ridiculous. And that was just one small company. So yeah. of course they're going to fight us to the nail. But they fought everybody else too for just a million dollars. They're ridiculous. If it deep pockets, it's easy for them to fight. It's hard. Right. For and they don't care. They want to make you broke until you cook so they can just keep taking it. No problem. Well, and 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 they don't want to they don't want to get the reputation of, of folding. You know, you fold for one. That's month, correct. And, and the fold. thing is, I was willing to work with them to build a product. My whole thing was to do co-development. For years I had sent letters. I used Wells Fargo to send letters to these companies to try to do co-development. We talked to CEOs. I went to the the game shows and I met with the head of Sony uh, ga uh, uh, music industry because I had some musicians who signed a contract to me. We're going to put in the game. I mean, I thought of everything. Right, right. <laughs> I had governments involved. They had the whole thing done. But anyway, successful marketing research. You can research like I did. You could do everything and still not get anywhere. That's a problem. If you see that you've got a number that you want to walk out with, take it wow. and don't look back use that money for the next product for the yes. next time there we go because yep. it's yep. easy to go broke it really easy it really and, I, and I, I tell people all the time don't leave your your, your, your full-time job at all never when the, always do this on someone else's right. time mm. that's correct when the venture capitalists tell you leave your job do this don't listen do because they want you to be broke to take over your company and your technology. Easy to yeah. control somebody who's completely That's under correct. the thumb. Yeah. yeah. And the venture capitalists will <laughs> always tell you to lose, to leave your job. Yeah. yeah you can have right. one person on the team who doesn't have a job, but you keep your job. Keep, please keep your right. job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, we're running. So, we only have 10 minutes before uh, we okay. have to. Uh, so we All right. Wrap, yeah. We, so, uh, you know, so successful marketing, what are you trying to build? Product, service, platform. Who's mm -hmm. going to use your product? Do they need your product? Why do they need your product? You can cut, these are questions you got to keep asking yourself. If you build it, will they come? Never. Always make sure you have a market. And if it's a market you're developing, make sure that people want it. Because sometimes they say they want it and they don't. Leave no stone unturned. Look everywhere, research constantly, question always. And watch your back. <laughs> Create personas to test your theory, types of individuals that would use your product or service or platform. Set up formal and informal research. Do everything you can to research, research, research. Have your data, hold your data. I think there's a last slide, I'm not sure. Next slide, um, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, how Barbaros came to be, how Barbara Technologies. Markets was only 700 million, as I said earlier, 40 years of learning, computer engineering, software, operating systems, integration, artificial intelligence, large systems, enterprise, all the way down to the PC. I was there during all of this. I worked on ARPANET, Motif, Postscript, Unix, cutting edge technologies. I worked on every single type of chip technology. I was one of the first people to see the TI chip that was revolutionary back in 2000, no, 19. God, what was it? 1995, I think. They had the most unbelievable chip technology that could do things that you were doing now. Um, you're constantly learning. You're constantly changing. You're constantly looking at your market, looking at your budget. And if your budget is, is, is too big, shrink down your product. Shrink it down. You have to have a titanium stomach. Not a, not a, 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 a concrete stomach, not a lead stomach a titanium and a will to keep going. You have to have a will of a warrior. Always watch your back. Always look that somebody is your enemy. Believe it or not, none of these people, the venture capitalists, the hedge funds, your advisors, everyone's always trying to get you, even your own employees. Because <laughs> I can tell you stories. It goes on. But sir, and don't give up. Never give up on your dream. You have to modify it, modify it. But don't give it up. If you really want to do this, it's hard. It's very, very hard. I mean, I found my first patent in 2002. I started my company, my third company in 2001. 
And I am still trying to get it off the ground. Still trying to raise money. We had Is a hedge worth- fund. Oh, yeah. I haven't had, had so much fun in my life. <laughs> the million four? I don't know if that was worth it. But it, it's really something. It's amazing. And what's helped me in my, my full-time job. Because I'm a lead IT analyst and product owner at National Grid. And I'm working on several different areas to help build their enterprise software to bring it forward. And what I do is I look at, and every time I'm exposed to something, my brain doesn't just stop there. Because I'm always thinking about, I can build this. I can see a market here. I can see something for green. I can see. So your brain is constantly being trained and constantly moving. It doesn't stop. And it's the most exciting thing you can do. You just don't. If you want to give up, make sure you have a good cushion behind you to just say, I'm done. And I'm done with this idea. But if you don't, just keep going like I have. Even though it's hard and people are saying, what do you spend all this money for? I'm still spending money. Today I was taught was decide to, if I was going to file another patent. I mean, I already have 15, I think 13, 15, 16. I don't know how many pending. <laughs> so, well, what's the exit strategy? What do you think you're, how, how I, we have like two minutes left, but uh, how okay, do you think you're going to so get out of here? One, one of my advisors was uh, Dr. Reggie Brothers. Mm-hmm. And he was the head, he was the, uh, he left my group because he had to. Obama chose him to be the Undersecretary of Defense the Homeland mm-hmm. Security and Technology. Reggie, gradu- Reggie graduated from MIT, couldn't believe my patents. He almost fell off his chair. He says, how did you do this? You don't even, you didn't graduate from MIT. <laughs> but what he did, he's watched me go through all this rigmarole. And he decided to do a SPAC because he has four patents that got awarded. Mm-hmm. He's been working with government contracts and whatever. So he's teamed up with a venture capital team as well as somebody else mm-hmm. to go with a SPAC and go public. And we've mm-hmm. talked about that because I have so much IP, I could literally go public tomorrow. You're, you're, you're thinking about actually doing, like, doing an IPO with this. Correct. That wow. is correct. And I'm thinking about that. Fine. And then I thought about how Fine. I can help students and actually other people utilize my platform because there's so many components to it that, you know, it's, it's, it's a very thick, IT-rich platform. Very rich. So this would be exciting. How fun. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the dream, right? It's the dream. Yes. <laughs> no. well, I, we're, looks like we're just about out of time. We have just a, a, maybe a minute left. If anybody has any uh, questions for Fran. Uh, now, if anybody does want to uh, connect with you, is LinkedIn the best way? Uh, no, no. Send my email, franbarbaro at msn.com. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and share that in the chat. Yeah. And then also Wednesday lab hours, Fran is one of the people who actually comes when we have our Wednesday lab hours and she's available uh, to meet with the founders at the rec and she will give advice. And, and she's just, I mean, she's helped me with so much. And I know so, so many of the founders have loved um, talking with her and, and working with her. So um, yeah, we're going to go ahead. Did we put that in the chat there, Stephen? Yep, we did. Yep. Thank you, Stephen. Does anybody right, have some perfect. real quick questions? I'm noticing quickly here. I understand that SaaS is a popular business model in part because of the implementation is not distributed. This is a distributed network. It's a distributed architecture. It is the foundation for the new internet. This is what I built. This is what I designed. It is the you infrastructure. Design, I you designed. design. It's the next. It's the next. Uh, the next level. The next generation. Uh, yep. It's an immersive next generation platform. And that's the other reason why they're trying to find out so hard because I haven't, I haven't filed patents on the components. I know what mm-hmm. I want to do, but because they're, you know, you want to use me, you got to pay me. So yeah, you've got the infrastructure. Now figure it I out. Should, I think you should do IPO. I, I mean, I, well, I think you should. I mean, it's going to cost money. And I think, mean, yeah, that's why you need the venture capitalists and everybody else to help you. You yeah. need somebody and other companies to help you do a SPAC. So that's what I'm thinking. I told that to my advisors and my investors. My poor investors, I thought they were going to die. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but they're going to, you know, when you're a visionary, there's always, always, always pushback. People are always trying Constant. to get you to think smaller and to, and to uh, yeah. you know, think in a way that they understand because their little brains don't get it, you know? Right. I shouldn't say that. But, well, you know. one of the founders of Adobe, Dan Putman, and I spoke about five years ago. He was my boss, too. And we he sat down. He thought, I mean, because I was sick, 
from years. He thought I was dead. And he couldn't believe. He says, you're alive. And I said, yeah, where were you guys when I need you? <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, up, buddy. <laughs> I said, I had these patents. And he says, you did what? <laughs> you know, he says, you did what? Are you kidding me? What are they on? You know, so I went, I was starting to go through it. And his first thing out of his mouth was, remember your family, your family friend. And I said, Dan, I haven't talked to you guys in 25 years. You have been out of my life. You but know, your family. Your family. Your family. Yeah. You know, so don't do anything to us. And I said, yeah. I want to work together. So he was reading and we were working through it. He says, it's too big. It's too big. It's too big. You made it too encompassing. And he's like, oh my God, how does this work? I mean, he was really freaking out because he saw that it spread across every area. I didn't just have the operating system. I also took 2D to 3D to 4D and I created 5D. And then I designed controllers to go into a camera. And then I also created a box to go to manufacturing devices. And I created all the different components. And I, you know, and I just kept you know. playing it. <laughs> I hope this goes. I really hope this goes. I'm excited about it. Every time I talk to you, I'm excited about it. Like, I, I, I want this to be reality, you know? Ugh. I do too. Well, I really just, seriously, I just want to share the world. I just keep telling everybody. I look at I, Bezos. I look at, at stupid, you know, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Zuckerberg is an idiot. Zuckerberg. But that's yeah. besides the point. You know, he got that, he got the platform from us. We built it back in 1991, uh, 91. Wait, he got it for nothing. Yeah, 1999. Nothing. He got it from, uh, from Jaja Zsa Zsa and from Jason Palmer. Mm -hmm. And I, because I asked him, I said, where did you get the product? And he says, well, they gave it to me at Harvard. How do I do this? Can you give me $25,000? And I said, no, I'm paying for my patents. I said, but geez, that sounds very familiar. It sounds like a product we built. I said, who at Harvard gave you that? And he just shut up. And all his friends are like, they came and they were saying, isn't he a jerk? Yes, we bought, we got it from, yeah, they told me, they said, we got it from Jason from Harvard. Right. I said, that was our product. And I was going to call the founder of my company and say, what the hell did you do? You gave <laughs> away the rights to Facebook, which was, which was originally um, mascot. Mm. That's what we called it. And we Nothing. owned it because Jason couldn't pay us for it. Huh? What didn't anyway, how much did they pay for it? It was like five they, I know we gotta go. Yeah. No, they, so what happened was is we we built the product. We yep. were in the whole 1.5 million. And Jason Powerbunner had to give it back to us. So because we didn't have the money, he didn't have the money. He couldn't raise his three million dollars. And my partner at the time borrowed money from his father, $150,000. Hmm. And he had to pay his father back. So what does he do? He sells it back to Jason for $50,000. And he hands it to Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. I'm like, well, you know what? That's what <laughs> Thank you, Fran. I could talk to you forever. I love, I, I love talking to you, and I'm so glad that you come on Wednesdays. And uh, next time, let's uh, let's chat some more because I have so many more questions for you. And um, absolutely, yeah. Anybody yeah. have questions? Seriously, just ask. I'm very open, very honest. I'll help you. I don't awesome. remember what anybody tells me what they're building because I do that on purpose. I have a way of just, you know, kind of blocking it out. I always, I truly believe in the NDA. Um, anyway, I seriously, I can help you. I will direct you, help you, whatever. I think I know every law firm in the country now. <laughs> You're one of, seriously, one of the most giving people I've ever met. So thank you. Thank you so much. This way it should be. It should be. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye. It was good to see you. Bye, everyone. Uh, those you. of you who Bye. are at the rack, we get started in a little bit. Thanks, Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. And good luck, you guys. Call me. <laughs> yeah, Bye. right? Hi everyone, my name is Tanya Hertz and I'm the director of the Regional Entrepreneurship Center, the Rec Innovation Lab at San Diego Miramar College. And I'd like to thank our partners at this time and give a special thanks to SDSU's Lavin Center, the SDSU Zip Launchpad. We'd like to thank the California Entrepreneurship Educators Conference. Also like to thank Harness, the Brink SBDC at USD, San Diego Unified Schools. We'd also like to thank School of Entrepreneurship and Technology, High Tech High, the Regional Advisory Committee, Alex Waters at the Jacobs Center, Connect All, 21 IQ Labs, Startup Quest, Productified. I'd like to thank Course Key and Tech Coast Angels. Thank you to Village Up, City Heights Development Corporation, San Diego Angel Conference, Startup San Diego, SBDC, Score San Diego, We Are Kingdom, New Media Rights, 
San Diego Tech Hub, Origin 63, Ambrosio 15, OmniSync, Optima Office, Proven Recruiting, Craft Leadership, GSNL Consulting. Thank you to all of our partners. We couldn't do what we do without you. Thank you.